Hey there guys, Classic Armor here, and welcome to Let's Play Shovel Knight! Yeah, this was not the next series I intended on doing, but then I had problems with 3D Game Heroes. Uh, specifically in that I recorded a whole bunch of it, and my video editor refuses to actually allow me to like process and make a video of the recording. So we're just going to do this, and... You know what? Let's just... Can I do enough characters for this? Here we go, Sea Homer. Classic Homer. Now, I have played this game kind of extensively. As some of you may or may not know, this was a... a Kickstarter game by Yacht Club Games. And it's super awesome, very Mega Man inspired, let's say. And I adore it. I did kickstart it, but not enough to show up in the special Kickstarter room. But the game is all about Shovel Knight, obviously, and his friend Shield Knight. And. As kind of basic as the story is, it's it's got a real charm to it. Not entirely a real sense of tragedy, but you know they're they're conveying a pretty good message here, or they're doing a decent job at conveying the message. Ah, life of solitude. Not entirely fitting for someone as awesome as Shovel Knight. And, of course, as soon as good takes a rest, evil rests control of the land. Because why wouldn't it? So after a long rest, Shovel Knight sets out on a new adventure. I love these opening... I wouldn't really call them title cards. Opening messages. The sharpen thy shovel and steal thy shovel. But yeah, this game is just so fantastic. Look at the background. It has parallax scrolling, such as one would hope to find in like a, a very advanced 16-bit uh, playing game, like a Super Nintendo or Genesis game. But uh, you know, this is made in. When did they say? 2014, I want to say, is when it actually came out. And if you like anything by Capcom or WayForward that is two-dimensional in gameplay, you will really enjoy this. It borrows heavily from elements such as uh, Mega Man, as I said earlier, especially the jumping and ladder climbing, but it's also got some inspiration from, like, DuckTales and Zelda 2, and even a little bit of Castlevania in here, so sit back and enjoy it. This game is just an absolute delight. As you can tell from the music alone, the music is just so good. And I believe you can purchase it all, you know, on Bandcamp.com. I suggest you do that if you enjoy it at all. And it was done by Jake Kaufman of, well, general way forward fame, but uh, I believe he also did Double Dragon Neon soundtrack, which you may remember a playthrough of that with a good buddy of mine way back when. And the game will be chock full of secrets, which is really good for anyone who, you know, wants a little more Metroid than their Mega Man. Without any of the... <laughs> well, not any. Let's just say... You know, the shovel is your main weapon. You are using a melee weapon, despite all the references I make to Mega Man, who uses primarily long-range weapons. So, you know, that's a pretty significant gameplay difference. And the pogo down, the poke, stab, whatever you want to call this, is probably the most useful attack you have. Just gonna lay that out there. There we go. And, of course, we are clicking gems and money for, you know, more than just pride, prestige. 
There will be reasons to everything, you'll see. First, we must get through the intro stage. Which is... Well, I'm sure plenty of games have done it, but... Mega Man X was a big contributor in my mind to having really good intro stages. To introduce a lot of the gameplay elements to the player before they had to worry about mastering much of or any of them. And death in this game is... I would not say the penalty for death is too high. It takes kind of a Dark Souls inspiration, Dark Souls Demon Souls, where when you die you lose a portion of your money, but you can get back to it and reclaim it, assuming you don't die again before you get to it. Oh, damn it. Now you see, you put all these gems here, that leads right to a secret, which is something a lot of platformers have done. Uh, Mario and Donkey Kong Country come to mind. You know, just lay a breadcrumb trail for you to follow to go and get the cool stuff. And the platforming does get rather intense, so... You know. Try... If you're going to play along, know that some things might end up being out of your depth if you are not particularly uh, well-versed in the classic... Uh, I'll specific role-playing. <laughs> classic platforming games of ye old days. Although this is a pretty good one to get in on, I think. If you wanted to get into retro gaming, because that's the cool thing. Not this, oh, League of Legends crap everyone's into. I will keep my controversial opinions to everybody, not to myself. Anyway, yes, retro gaming actually... I am pretty happy with the recent developments in it. The way it's kind of exploded onto the scene again. Oh! Also, not everything is entirely needed to be killed. Some guys are totally optional. Now, you might want to kill the dragon so you get some more money. Just be careful not to fall into the pit that it's standing over. Also, you might lose out on quite a bit of the money anyway. Depending on when you kill the dragon, a lot of the money tends to just fall down there. So, you know. That's mostly why I'm just bypassing it. To show you can, and because I really just am not that worried. Probably get most of the money to get the upgrades I need by the end of the game anyway. At least any ones I care about. I'm... <sighs> I'm going to make a conscious effort to get all the secrets and unlocks, but, you know, if I miss something here or there, I'm not going to lose my mind over it. But if I remember it, I might go back for it. We'll see. Anyway, that's a fun little secret, and those music note sheets I'm picking up, they serve another purpose. Ah! I'd love just to be able to bounce on things infinitely. Wall Chicken, another Castlevania-inspired thing. And the Black Knight. Which, as I said in the recently finished Rogue Legacy videos, it's pretty cool whenever you get a mirror match of sorts, someone with similar abilities to you. Clearly, this Black Knight bears a resemblance to our Shovel Knight. <laughs> and he seems to be barring our way. Oh no, not the Enchantress and, and the Order of No Corta! Love that name. And this fucker is just so oozing with not enthusiasm or encouragement. Confidence. There we go. That's the word. He's all, oh yeah, yeah. You you want to take care of all these things, but none of it matters because I'm stopping you here. Pretty cocky. And I w I would dare say he's maybe got some better abilities than Shovel Knight. Of course, uh. If you are good enough, it really won't matter that you can jump higher and do better downstabs. 
Time it out, and you can hit him out of it, or you can just jump on him. And you can reflect that back at him. That's something you might not realize without uh, checking the achievements page. Or accomplishments, whatever they call it. Yep, finish you! Ha ha! Oh hey, like I said, check the defeats page, and you might realize that you can do that simply by the description of said achievements and feet. And I <laughs> I really enjoy the cinematic slow pan. Not really a pan, but fade? Sure. <gasps> Shield Knight! She was not falling over there before. That's okay. And I really enjoy the storytelling implications that these dream sequences have because it shows that Shovel Knight is constantly haunted by his failure to sh uh, save Shield Knight earlier. Oh, another reference or uh, inspiration I would say this game took. Super Mario Bros. 3 Star World Map. The game's just rifled with it all. Next time, we'll explore the village. See you guys later.